Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Bring It Down. Let's check out Outcast Respite. Or Respite. Deep in the bog, you find a cave entrance obscured by vines. The bog's characteristic rot wafts from the cave, but so too does a strangely alchemical smell. As you brush aside the vines and step inside the cave, you hear the faint sound of laughter coming from further in. All right, let's blitz him. Surprised that I weak to burn damage. Behind us too. Alright, we'll have Palagina hold the back line. Oh. Hmm? Adair should be fine right there. Pop it up, don't they? I don't think I can pull that off. You're not getting away. Where she thinks she's going? Perfect. This does cold and crushed damage, so. And they're weak to cold damage. Fantastic. Could you use something to put a little bit in my step? I <laughs> I am ready. I bring your end. It wasn't a particularly difficult fight, but it was more than I was expecting. Take them down. I'm sure that I was more than they were expecting. <laughs> Say your prayers. Oh. Yes? I've got it. Of course. Bog ass stinks of rotten meat.
on it. The pool of water before you swirls in a riot of colors. The occasional bubble floats to the surface and pops, releasing a puff of colorful smoke that smells by turns acrid and flowery. <laughs> we could just drink from it. Examine the pool. You dip a small glass bottle into the bubbling pool and hold it up to the light to get a better look. The liquid inside slowly separates into several levels. You surmise that the layers must be of different densities, and thus must in fact be several distinct liquids. The fumes blur your vision and make your head spin. Alright, nothing venture, nothing gained, right? Drink from the pool. You dip your bare hands into the pool and drink what doesn't slip between your fingers. Why? We just had a glass bottle. A strange warmth suffuses your limbs. You suddenly feel like you could knock out a dragon with a single punch. Alchemic Brawn. Oh, plus two constitution and plus two might. I assume that only lasts until our next rest. Hey, well, don't Can we see give it to everybody? Not. There's a new description. This time your stomach heaves and you immediately throw up. Let retain the buff. In Sigil of pain. Let's have Aloth take care of that. We're gonna hold the line here. I don't want to get in range of that. I bring your Let's get awfully close for that. I get a few defensive buffs up here. <laughs> I never finished casting that either. Right, fantastic. Let's get Aloth back to safety. As soon as he can use his abilities again. this guy off for me. Awesome. Claps on this witch. And we took out the boss already. Hamawatua. Will do. 
The Pora's Grimoire. Was oh, that one of the ones Nemnok wanted? And a Cauldron Shard. Acid Repulsion, plus one Corrode Armor Rating. Transmuted Iron. All damage from acid or poison attacks has a 20% chance to be converted into 20% health for the wearer. And plus one constitution. And poison purge. The shard leeches deadly fluids and harmful humors from the wearer's body. Grants immunity to poisons for a brief time. Brief time? 88.2 seconds is not brief. The result of a sudden alchemical mishap. This chunk of green iron is part of a destroyed cauldron. Whatever compounds it once carried have suffused it with a protective magical aura that tingles against your skin. And which is key? A small silver key with a faint alchemical smell emanating from it. Huh? The body on the table is dotted with a butcher schematic, like a hog before carving. The cauldron nestled in the center of the witch's hut is filled with a foul, bubbling brew. Examine the cauldron. A hulking cauldron squats at the center of the witch's hut. Arcane symbols are etched across its surface in precise lines. They're clearly enchanted to serve some larger purpose. You're unsure what that is. Sure. The margins of these books are cluttered with notes written in a shaky hand. Encoded Notes his notes are written in an intricate code that makes them impossible to read without the key. I have a witch's key. <laughs> Only someone with a prodigious knowledge of history or the alchemical arts, or an aptitude for code breaking, will be able to decipher them. His notes are written in a strange code. You have no idea what they say. Set the notes aside. I'm assuming this guy can decipher it though. Hey. You, over here. I thought we met some of the requirements. Maybe not alchemy. That's, uh, Takehu. I've got it. Ah, feels good to stretch my legs, Akira. Free once again. How do you get captured in the first place? Bad luck, eh? Always this seems to happen to me. First pirates, now witches. Oh, for what? A salve recipe? It is madness. Do you know what the witches were brewing in that cauldron? Huh. What potion requires bat bile, cat blood, and dandelion fluff? Even I'm not crazy enough to touch it, I say. So, about my reward? There is not much I might give you, I'm afraid. Ah, but wait. The witches. They made many notes regarding the contents of their cauldron. I should know. They would not feed me unless I gave them advice on the concoction. <laughs> Fools. He spits on the floor and shakes his head bitterly. Bring me their notes, friend, and I will decipher them for you, yes? Then you may make use of their potion without danger. He nods vigorously. You're not leaving, but I just freed you. Ikir. Who do you think collected those ingredients for the witches? Me, Tamawatua. They are mine as much as anyone's, I say. I will take some time to study this island, I think. Strange things grow among its weeds, and they will need names. And if you need supplies before you go, Tama will sell you what he can find. Akira. He dips his head in graceful acknowledgement. What do you have for sale? You take a look, eh? You can always do with more Ripple Sponge to keep feeding Aloth's addiction. Said he'll decipher the notes Free for me. Once again, there is not much I might. I should know. Bring me their notes, friend, and I will decipher them for you. Yeah. Huh. What? Thank you again.
I already forgot what the notes were called. Oh, I didn't pick him up. Free once again. You have the witch's notes? I will translate them for you as a show of thanks. Hey, Kara. Huh. What? Here we go. Deciphered notes. To create a draught of greater strength, a blend of flame and ruby make. For one who seeks vitality, a mix of stone and pearl they need. Grant oneself a careful step, a brew of wind and emerald prep. If cleverness one lacks in spades, for flame and sapphire one needs must trade. For those few cursed with lesser vision, Adraban and wind provision. Well, I can't risk using any of that. And to be blessed with purpose or intention, grind stone and amber in succession. And to each elixir and join we must, the inclusion of a shining dust, a hearty smear of spirit essence, and a water of a pure quintessence. Uh, let's do strength. Great potion of Mataru strength. You follow the directions you glean from the witch's notes. After cobbling together the necessary ingredients and dumping them into the cauldron as directed, you take your first tentative sip. You immediately feel tougher and more vital. And that's all we can do. I assume it was a permanent buff, right? A cauldron brew. I wonder if that was the best use of it. But we do have healing effects. I think it's worth it. Only for the main character. Hmm? The sharp scent of resi residual alchemical reagents burns your nose. So I'm right. stumbling over some of my words today. Uh, my cat is making a ton of noise in the background. Not sure it's picking up on the microphone or not. He's usually asleep at this hour. Coven's Cove. Alright, so is that the... It was. Oh, let's go back and get that other reward from Nemnok. Uh, we'll explore some of the... Fog of War as we make our way back. I admire you, Shoti, for holding to your beliefs, even against the wishes of your superiors. You really mean that? Because I thought you didn't much like me. I mean it. It took me entirely too long to learn to do the same. I'm curious if Anik has anything to say now that we've met with Nemnok. You steal from Nemnok. You steal from the Junvik. I guess not. Oh wait, I hadn't read that description before. Uh, stepping in through the mouth. That's okay.
Well, let's see what the final reward is for our subservience to Nemnok. Nemnok opens a claw and gestures for you to speak freely. I have a grimoire for your library, Nemnok. Show me. Nemnok eases closer and flares its nostrils at your peck. Give book. The par is grimoire, covered from a swamp witch's hut. Ah, there is much to be gleaned from the scribblings of a crone. Nemnok holds the grimoire by its spine and shakes it hard. Dozens of silverfish tumble to the ground. I have books enough for the moment. Accept your final reward and go. Nemnok makes a dismissive gesture toward the three chests, the tension wandering elsewhere. I also got a couple of love lumps. Grimo Prismatic Quarterstaff. Legendary Bound Blights. Plus one all acid power levels, plus one all electricity power levels, plus one all fire power levels, and plus one all frost power levels. And soul charge. Plus 5% staff damage, increases with metaphysics skill. And plus 5% action speed, increases the metaphysics skill. Interesting. An Animancer created this staff of copper and prismatic Audra in order to bind blights. The captured blights infuse the copper staff with control of the elements, turning it into a sort of elemental battery. Incidentally, the Animancer found that this process also allowed his invention to rip soul fragments from his victims to charge the effects of the staff. Right, so Entropy Shield. 1% damage reduction for 10 seconds when hit. Stacks 5 times. Increases with metaphysics skill. And Soul Storm. Launches raw damage AoE on scoring 5 consecutive hits on target, plus 5% of... and the remaining effect is the same. Alright, and... Elemental Induction. Plus 15% damage for 10 seconds when hit with Acid, Fire, Frost, and or Electricity attacks. Enthralled Blights. The plus one to all power levels, and plus 3% damage is burn, corrode, freeze, and shock. That is very good. Mm -hmm. Alright, Jody. Arcana and Religion. And our last... Series of spells. Flashing Vine. Summon a large living vine from the earth that will attack and pull enemies. Mogrin's Might. The priest calls upon Mogrin to cleanse a target in flames, whereby they are bombarded by pillars of flame until their sins have been clen cleansed. Each pillar deals burn and crush damage, or and or, and reduces the durations for hostile and beneficial effects on the target. Call of Rhymergond. The priest calls upon Rhymergond, creating an opening to the white void. The area pulses periodically, Drawing in all nearby while dealing freeze damage and lowering the duration of all beneficial effects. Revenge of Skyne creates a sphere of divine darkness that causes the blind affliction to anyone who is inside or moves into the area. Blessing of Wile The priest gains a divine aura of Wile. Allies nearby gain a bonus to all defenses. Additionally, any enemy who strikes one under the deity's protection may become blinded. Hand of Barith. Drains the energy of life from a target, reducing their power level significantly. This reduces the strength of all spells and abilities. I right, we get two. I'm gonna grab Pillar of Holy Fire and Mogren's Might. And Aloth. Bluff and Mechanics. Uh, Death Blows is probably worth it. We saw this already on a dare, so Death Blows it is. I 
I like Tain's Chaotic Orb. So I think that's what we'll go with. Name for the eccentric Adiran Wizard Tain. The Chaotic Orb bounces between a number of enemies, dealing damage and inflicting a variety of negative afflictions, including petrified, paralyzed, weakened, sickened, stunned, and blinded. It's good to always have that on hand, regardless of the grimoire that you have equipped. Palagina should be getting close. Oh, no, not quite. Leave this place, Acolyte. Until I summon you again. That's it. Okay. Oh, well, I got some good rewards. No one in my immediate party uses quarter staves. I don't know if anyone even has proficiency in it. Metaphysics. Seraphin. I think he's our metaphysics guy, right? And somebody else. Maybe Fasina? I have a little bit more fog of war up here to clear out. I didn't realize we're that close to the northern border. I would have done it before we came back here. The island with the witches may have been the northernmost island, or northwesternmost island. And south we go. And now we zigzag. I know there's a whole lot of nothing right here. Not even any flotsam. We finally found some land. Go and check that out while we're here. You hear two crew members arguing on the deck. An argument from the deck pulls your attention away from the gentle rocking of the ship, the smooth expanse of blue on the horizon. I've already seen this one before, I'm not going to read it again. Uh, the fish go back in the sea, I won't risk the crew's health. Nothing new there.
All right, let's make landfall. Grab water and food, and... We have to decide if we want to go to the Vampire's Crypt or the Bent Bow Forest first. I'm going to go to the forest first. There may not be any combat involved there. But I think it's safe to assume there will be some combat in the Vampire's Crypt. So. Either way, I'm going to call it here for now. Next time, we'll explore the Bent Bow Forest and the Vampire's Crypt. And continue mapping out the Deadfire. We're getting close to the end. So for now, thanks for watching. Love to see you guys in the next one.